National Gallery podcast. Hello, I'm Miranda Hinckley and this is the National Gallery podcast. In this month's episode... I mean, there is this 40-year-old man, he just had a child, he's full of ideals, he wants to idealise his woman, he paints as a goddess, whatever. Then things go wrong, he's desperate, he's an easy... He's a painter, I mean, I can very well sympathise with this because, you know, to be able to paint, you have to have something inside that... that you know, sort of pushes you to pain. And at the time, I mean, you know, he was really, really low. How the women in Picasso's life influenced his art and... Well, literally, when I first saw the painting, it was just a painting that I quite liked and just literally liked it on its visual. And then looking more into it, decided it was uh, quite a sombre bunch of flowers. It's quite funereal. It's not a jolly kind of happy wedding kind of bunch. And now to the National Gallery's major new exhibition, Picasso Challenging the Past. Among the masterpieces on display are a number of nudes, a subject Picasso returned to throughout his life. Picasso hotly denied his nudes were portraits of his partners, but it's interesting to note that his dramatic and frequent changes in painting style often coincided with the beginning of a new love affair. The Catalan artist and lecturer Ava Bosch will be talking about Picasso's women as part of a series of lectures at the gallery to accompany the show. Leah Caribbean visited her studio to discuss this aspect of Picasso's life and work. Ava, there were so many women in Picasso's life who served as his models that we really could be here all day discussing them, but we're going to concentrate on just two of his partners who gave rise to some truly exceptional pictures. And the first work we're going to look at is the large bather, the monumental large bather of 1921. Could you just start by describing it for us? I think that the most important thing to say about this bather is that the the canvas is actually bigger than Picasso. I mean, Picasso, I think, measured about a metre 75 or something like that, and the painting, it's 182 by 101 centimetres. So I think that's important. He makes this woman in a canvas which is bigger than him. And then the lady occupies the entire surface, and so it's a very, very large de- lady, very, very bulky. And yet this is so classically inspired, it reminds us of, of classical sculpture. And we know in 1919 he'd been to the British Museum, he'd come to London, mm-hmm. hadn't exactly, he? And he'd seen right, the Parthenon yeah. marbles. But there's also other, other things that seem to be in here too. I mean, these the sort of huge inflated quality sort of reminds us a bit of the Cezanne um, Definitely. bathers, and also possibly... Renoir nudes that Picasso we know loved but along with all these sources or potential sources for this wonderful picture we know that Picasso in 1917 had met a Russian ballerina called Olga Koklova and they fall in love they get married the following year and in 1921 the year that he paints this bather she has her child his first child Paolo do you think that affects the way this picture looks? Absolutely. I think that, you know, in many ways what Picasso is doing here is saying to a certain extent thank you to this lady for having introduced him yet again to a new dimension, you know, the dimension of actually having a child, you know. And uh, so I think this is very much part of this painting. I mean, in this painting, uh, Picasso is idealising Olga. And it's interesting because Olga is a very petite ballerina from Russia, a very sort of aristocratic lady. But in here, you see, he paints as a large woman, which Olga is not. So really, this lady, in terms of actually uh, structure, has got absolutely nothing to do with Olga. I mean, he paints Olga as he idealises her. I mean, this is a goddess. He is the mother goddess that has just produced a child for him. And they were, obviously, at this stage in their relationship, things must have been going fairly well. But by the end of it, it was really quite a a bitter relationship, not helped by the model of the next picture that we're going to look at, um, Marie-Thérèse Walter. This is painted in 1932, and it's called Nude in a Red Armchair. He meets her, doesn't he, in 1927, when she's just 17 years old, is that right? That's right, yes. Well, first of all, the lady is only depicted from her thighs up. So, you know, it's a half Marie Therese. It's not a complete Marie Therese. And then Marie Therese, unlike Olga, like the painting of Olga, she's full of curves. I mean, starts really with this kind of spiral way in, in which you, you move through the painting until it, it sort of stops into the face where he's placed two faces. I mean, that's very typical of Picasso, isn't it? Two profiles sort of beating each other. He did the same thing with... Yes, a beautiful blue profile 
with sort of peppermint hair meeting or almost kissing the other absolutely. side of her yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. it, it does put one in mind of artists that we know that Picasso absolutely adored, like Ingres, the Madame Watessier with those mm-hmm, wonderful mm-hmm. bendy fingers. There's this sort of pliable bendiness about her. This, though, is painted, is it not, at the same time that he's still with Olga? I mean, he's, yes. He, he has this relationship. It starts in 1927. He keeps it secret and f- until 1935 when Olga discovers that Marie-Thérèse is pregnant, pregnant <laughs> with Maya, the, the, his second child. And should we be bothered by this aspect of his biography once we know it? Does it diminish what we see in the pictures? Well, you see, I mean, I think maybe we should go back to the bather thing here, you see. I mean, there is this 40-year-old man. He's just had a child. He's full of ideals. He wants to idealize this woman. He paints as a goddess, whatever. Then things go wrong. He's desperate. He's an easy... He's a painter. I mean, I can very well sympathize with this because, you know, to be able to paint, you have to have something inside that... that you know, sort of pushes you to pain. And at the time, I mean, you know, he was really, really low. So therefore he meets this beautiful blonde in the street and then, you know, he gets completely flabbergasted by her. I don't think there's anything so criminal about it, you know. And then, of course, that was the kind, a kind, you know, of urge which sort of got him again in a different plane so that he could continue being the painter that he was. So the biography really shouldn't get in the way of of us looking at Picasso as as a great artist. In fact, actually, it's almost to one side, do you think? Well, I would say the biography which is in the paintings, yes. I think, you know, I think the history of Picasso is all written in his paintings. I mean, you don't have to read one single word to actually really see what Picasso is about. So it's all there. Thanks to Ava Bosch, who'll be giving a lunchtime lecture at the National Gallery on Monday the 27th of April.